Hello, I'm Matthew Turner. I'm a registered architect. Welcome back to my humble little YouTube channel for my STEM video. Um, as you can see, I've got the, the corporate background happening here. Um, just playing around with, uh, with a few things. Um, but today I just wanted to show you uh, one of my recent projects just to give you a bit of an idea of what it is actually do and, and what, I, what I design for my clients. Um, so I've just recently had a couple of clients move into their, their new homes, it's been finished off. Um, and as we all know, um, we're in a time of um, isolation and uh, being, being in a lockdown, stuck at home. So I've just asked um, Jody if she can take a few photos um, of her home um, that I can share today. So there's not going to be any professional photography or anything like that. So um, apologies for um, uh, for whatever you might see, but this is just this is just the real world. This is real life. But in any case, you'll get an idea of um, what the building looks like. Um, so what I think I'm going to start with is just to show you the 3D model. So I'll just make my head a bit bigger there. This is basically a design tool called SketchUp, um, which is pretty easy for most people to use. Um, you can get a, a free version. I, I believe you can download a free version to play around with, but this is um, the pro version. Just a few more features. So I not only use this as a design tool, but also to present to my clients just to give them a better idea of um, what it is that their building is going to look like. So it didn't end up looking like this with the claddings, but it's just a fun way to play around with, with what could be different, um, different materials, different colors, just to, to get the imagination going for the clients. Um, what I'm looking at here is um, more or less the, the north side. Um, this line across here is the street. So we're actually at a bit of an angle to north. Now, if I look at a, a plan view, north is actually directly up at the screen like that. The street is running along here. So I've actually rotated the building. I've got this angle here, which is facing north. Now, north facing glass, getting the sun into your living areas throughout the day is absolutely vital when creating a passive solar home. A passive solar home is simply allowing sunlight to come into the home in a controlled manner where it provides heat along the lines of a greenhouse. If you've ever been into a greenhouse, very warm uh, during the day, at night, of course, it's freezing cold. So it's a balance between glass to let the sun in, but then solid, thick, insulated walls and roof to keep all that heat in once the sun is no longer shining. So down here, we can actually play around with the time of year, the time of day. So if I go to the middle of winter and go to early in the morning, and I'm going to exaggerate these shadows a bit, you can see that the front of that building is already getting direct sun. And as we move around to the middle of the day, try and get a better view. You can see that sun coming directly into the living area there. We do have a bit of a tree here, so you can see the shade coming across. Um, but it's a different, like that's a bit later um, in uh, uh, early spring. So we just look at where the sun's coming in at different times of the year. We want to make sure that we get it as much in as possible when the sun is low in the cooler months. Then we go to January. We want to make sure that there's very little direct sun um, hitting that glass. So you'll notice that the building line has a few different angles on it. Um, the roof overhang here 
is what is providing the shade to this window down below as it is over on the left hand side over here. So the, the building has an interesting form, but it's very much guided by a, a practical function. Over on the west, this is normally where we don't want a lot of sun because in the afternoon, in summer, the sun comes low um, straight into our windows and, and it's very hot. Most people end up just dropping the curtains. So this little device here um, is something I've borrowed from um, a well-known um, French architect, Le Corbusier, um, who was active in the modernist period, um, early to mid last century, and he called this a brise soleil, which is just French for um, sun shading. And having these vertical elements here actually help to deal with that low angle sun, stop that sun directly coming in, in through that glass. Also adds a little bit of visual interest as well. So the rear of the building, um, normally try to minimize the glass um, on the, the south. You're not getting any direct solar gain in through um, the south of the building. So windows um, in that case are really just a form of, of heat loss, um, but they could also be handy to let in sunlight. In this case, it's our physical and visual connection to the backyard. But the whole main living space is only one room deep. So we're maximizing our solar gain um, throughout the building. There's not really any rooms at the back of the house which are not getting direct sun into there. Um, so another cool thing with SketchUp is if you build your model um, smartly and use layers, you can turn the individual layers off. So in this case, I've turned the roof layer off. So I can see inside my building, we're using thicker than normal stud walls. I think these are 140 mil stud walls, so you can fit a thicker insulation bat. Um, we want to try and get um, above minimum requirement for um, insulation, um, wherever possible. Um, okay, so this is a small footprint home. I should I should mention this was a, a low budget owner builder home. Um, so Jody came to me uh, quoting a figure of ninety thousand dollars she wanted to build a home for as an owner builder with her father, uh, who was actually a, um, a carpenter and a, a builder in his working life. So. Um, uh, they were quite a resourceful um, pair who did a very good job to build this building. They did end up spending a little bit more than 90000 but it's a 67 square metre home. It's one bedroom, one bathroom, laundry, kitchen, living and meals area, everything that you would need, and it would be comfortable for two people. What we've done, the front door is via an airlock, which also doubles as the laundry and a mudroom. Maybe that's a little bit radical, you might say. But when we're dealing with small compact homes, you can't be wasteful with rooms that are not going to be useful for at least two functions. So having an airlock means you're coming in through the main door that you're always using to come and go. And then there's going to be another door in here that will remain shut during winter. So that when you come through the front, you're not losing all of your hard fought hot air. So that's what we call an airlock. Kick your muddy boots off, hang up your coat, uh, put a load of washing on, come to the house proper. Um, okay, so we've got a, a dividing feature masonry wall here between the living and the bedroom. Bedroom's plenty big enough for a, a double bed, built in robe, and then um, the bathroom off the back here really serves as a, as a direct ensuite from the bedroom, but also if anybody can use it, they can just duck into there. Okay, so I'm going to have a quick look at the section. Right, so that's a section through the middle of the building, through the living area. All this out area in the roof, that's a void. Um, for deep insulation. So we could fit our six insulation. My roof trusses always have a deeper heel section so that we can run that deep insulation all the way to the edge of the roof. 
which is something that typically you cannot do in a standard truss because um, the truss gets too thin at, um, at the edge of the roof at the wall junction. So in reality, you're only putting maybe now two bat for about half a meter or so around the perimeter of the building, which you know is, is, is a lot less um, insulation than, than what you need. Okay, and also with these little um, surfeed spaces here, where I'm allowing fresh air to come up into my roof space via um, some open battens. And we also have a whirly bird or a vented ridge cap so that um, your heated and moist air um, can passively escape. I'm gonna stop that. I'll show you a few pics. So as I said, we have professional photography. Um, I took these photos on my phone a few months back prior to completion of the building. So, okay, um, the owner has selected um, being a builder, um, share the privilege of choosing all of the materials and colors. Uh, the outside is very assuming. You might find it looks a little bit like um, a black shed. I don't really care. It's more about what it's like to live in the building. Uh, let's uh, do some scrolling. Okay, so it's a simple bond cladding on the walls uh, and, and matching on the roof. Uh, uh, we've gone for, I think, timber aluminium composite windows. So they're aluminium on the exterior which is obviously low maintenance, uh, but it's a solid timber frame. So it's called the thermal benefits of the timber frame. Um, and you also see the timber internally. So this is complete now. These were taken on a day a couple of weeks ago. Obviously it's still the cold weather, uh, but it only takes a sunny day like this, even in the winter to be heating up your home. You can see She's got the PVs, there's a couple of um, arrays on um, the cupboard and also on the roof. Uh, we've got a, just a simple burnished concrete slab, which is excellent for absorbing um, solar gain, um, storing that, that heat energy into the floor, which then um, heats up the building fabric itself. So you've got that long lasting radiant heat. Uh, all the internal walls are lined with plywood. So there's no plasterboard anywhere in the building. Um, so you don't always have to have plasterboard. There's always going to be alternatives. Um, Jody's pick, picked a great color scheme here. Some very natural um, mid tones. I think it all works very well together. And she had a very minimal fit out, which I like to not too much stuff, but there's a place for everything. Uh, you can see on the wall here we have um, the register for reverse cycle air conditioner, uh, which is like a heat pump, heating and cooling system, um, very efficient, low energy usage. And if you're generating your own electricity through your photovoltaics, I think electric heating and electric appliances are a good way to go because you're not drawing from the grid, you're not using um, non renewable energy. So you're more responsible for, for your own sustainable energy production. Nice bathroom, everything you need, walk-in shower, staying to get the veggie gardens going in the backyard. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a great, it's a very small block it's in an urban um, setting in, in Beaufort in the little street, um, but she's gonna be very, Happy there for the long term, you know, whether you have to just spend a time at home, work from home, she's going to be growing food, it's going to be a cheap to run home um, and easy to stay warm and comfortable. So that is the laundry slash entry airlock I, I mentioned earlier. Um, it's all very neat. You can hide everything away. It doesn't have to be a mess. That's up to you. Um, that's more of a living area and you can see that feature block wall which also does get some direct morning sun heating on that. So that's storing heat energy as well. That's an example of the um, roof, so feet ventilation um, battens. So there's just a gap between these battens. There's also a metal mesh backing onto that. 
So you're not getting any vermin or um, in a bushfire setting, you're not getting any burn feeders coming up into there. Okay, so that's Jody's house. Uh, I'm just going to show one other thing. And um, this is um, what happens in the cold weather um, when you have a fairly cheap, <laughs> but unfortunately very standard aluminium single glazed window um, in a bathroom where a lot of moisture is being created or even in any, any other um, room of the home, you end up with this problem. Now, I just want to show you what happens when you have a single glazed aluminium framed window in your home. This is what happens when you go for the cheap window option. So if I go in a bit closer, that is just liquid running down the glass, down the frame, and running onto the sill. So this is happening every day when it starts to get into the colder weather. It's not even winter yet, it's late autumn. So if I just have a look at my thermometer here. So the inside temperature 18.9. See where it says 10.5? That's the other end of this sensor, which I just have sitting in the bottom of the frame there. So it's like a nine degree temperature difference between the air temperature a foot away from the window and on the frame itself. So that temperature differential is part of the reason why that condensation is being caused. But you can also imagine what it makes, what, what effect that has on the temperature um, of your room. Like whenever you're close to a window, you're nine or 10 degrees colder when you have a cheap window like this. So spend a few extra bucks if you're building a new home or renovating and get a proper double glazed, thermally broken window. If you have to go aluminium, at least get a thermally broken aluminium window frame or better still, uh, solid timber or PVC. Okay, so that's a very common scenario um, for a lot of homes, even um, homes being built today um, with our current uh, minimum requirements for energy efficiency. Um, volume builders in particular are still able to, to get away with um, using um, these, these kinds of low quality windows. Now you cheap that on the windows, you've got that problem in your home forever. You're going to be unhappy all the time. Um, so I definitely think it's worth spending the extra money to get a better window, to get a double glass window. It's going to be better for your uh, thermal comfort. It's going to be better for your health because um, the condensation issue um, that we're seeing even in new buildings, um, it's not only bad for the health of our building, it's, it's bad for the health of the people who, who live in there. So that's something we definitely can avoid and we know how to do that. The example I just showed you before of Jerry's small house. Um, okay, maybe for a budget, she could have built a, a bigger home with some cheaper, lower quality um, materials and products. But um, the aim of that home was to use the money to make it a, a, a better quality thermal envelope so that she would just be warmer throughout the year or, or cooler in summer. Um, cheaper to run, cheaper bills, um, lower mortgage, um, and just not a bigger house than what she needs. Like a bigger house, it's more maintenance, um, it's more cleaning, 
Um, and I think we just simply don't need like these, these big houses that, um, that we see proliferating um, our, our suburbs and, and even in urban areas all the time. So um, I'll talk more about um, small homes, um, quality of products, how we can achieve good quality, healthy and efficient homes um, with our budget. Um, I'm also going to introduce a new segment which at the moment I'm just calling the good, the bad and the ugly, which is basically me just cruising around my new neighborhood here in Ballarat, looking at some of the newer buildings um, which are under construction or which have been recently built um, and just seeing what people are getting away with, with, with supposed um, uh, energy efficient building. Um, I'm going to be a little bit saving um, with some of those examples. Um, so make sure you tune in for that one. See you next time.